Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, we're going to be starting a new series called AEEE Prep. So this is basically the Amrita Engineering Engines exam preparation and we're looking at questions, sample questions of the AEEE. So this is basically an exam, an entrance exam that helps you to, that those who are qualified will then enter university. So today we're going to be looking at questions of chemistry. So we're going to be looking at some sample questions and then we'll find out how to solve them in detail. So here comes our first question. The actual atomic weight of an element is represented in number U G M U. So we have four options and option D is incorrect because MU as itself is not a unit of mass. We have then option C gram and gram is usually used for molar mass. So number, so the mass of one mole of a particular element will be weighed in grams, but here we're asking for the actual atomic weight. So option C is incorrect. What about option A, number? Well, the atomic number is an indication of the number of protons in an atom. So therefore option A is also incorrect. The correct answer is option B, U. U stands for unified mass. And this was also earlier called AMU, atomic mass unit. So it's basically one twelfth of carbon of the mass of a carbon twelve atom. So therefore, the correct option for this question is option B, U, which is unified mass. Let's look at another question. The measurement of a thermodynamic property known as temperature is based on zeroth law of thermodynamics, first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics, Kirchhoff's equation. So we have four options and let's look at each of those options. Option D says Kirchhoff's equation. So what is the Kirchhoff's equation? The Kirchhoff's equation states that the difference of heat capacities is equal to the rate of change of the internal energy of a system. And this reaction is valid for and this equation is valid for reactions which exhibit a constant volume so therefore option d is not the does not help us in defining how we measure temperature so option d is incorrect what about option c second law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics deals with entropy, which basically is the randomness of a particular system. And it says the change in entropy is equal to the rate of change of heat. So delta S equals delta Q divided by T. So since second law is based on entropy, so option C is incorrect. What about option B, the first law of thermodynamics? Well, what does the first law of thermodynamics state? In an equation, the first law of thermodynamics states that the change in internal energy is equal to the difference between heat supplied and work done. So basically, it talks about the internal energy of a system and how it is being and how it is uh, formed. So it's, it, it tells us how heat flows. So heat can be used either to do work or it can be used to increase the internal energy of the system. 
So therefore, option B, again, does not gives us, gives you a good way of measuring temperature. So option B is incorrect. The correct answer is option A, the zeroth law of thermodynamics. So what does the zeroth law of thermodynamics state? It states that two systems which are equal in temperature to a third system are equal to each other. So that basically means that if you, in a thermometer, if the mercury is in contact with, say, boiling water, then after some time, the temperature of the mercury would be equal to the temperature of the boiling water. And that's why it rises. So using the zeroth law of thermodynamics, we can effectively chart out a way to create thermometers and other devices which can help us in measuring temperature. So option A, the zeroth law of thermodynamics, is the most appropriate option. Next question. Bell metal is an alloy of copper and tin, silver and copper, copper and zinc, I mean copper and nickel, copper, zinc, and tin. So copper, zinc, and tin is option D, and the alloy that's made out of copper, zinc, and tin is gunmetal. So this is basically used for making armaments, ammunition, etc. So therefore, option D is incorrect. Copper and nickel is used for making monol, which is used in various industries. So that means option C is incorrect. Silver and copper, when they are mixed together, they form an alloy called sterling. And this is used in coinage in earlier times. So option B is incorrect. The correct answer is option A, copper and tin. Now copper and tin form bronze, and bronze is usually used to form bells. So bells are usually made of bronze, so bronze is the bell metal, and it's an alloy of copper and tin. Usually bell metal set means that the, bron the bronze that's used in bell metal has a higher amount of tin, as compared to other types of bronze. Let's look at another question. How many sigma and pi bonds are present in nitromethane? So you have six, pi, six sigma one pi, five sigma two pi, six sigma two pi, and five sigma one pi. So first, let's find out the structure of nitromethane. So nitromethane's chemical formula is CH3NO2, but it, just writing NO2 doesn't make it doesn't make it just. So we will write plus on nitrogen and minus on oxygen. And here's the reason why. When we look at its structure, you can see that carbon has bonded to three hydrogen atoms with a single bond, and then it bonds with nitrogen in a single bond, and this nitrogen forms a double bond with one oxygen and then forms another bond with another, a single bond with another oxygen, but then it doesn't have enough electrons, so basically oxygen loans an electron, so it loans an electron over, so what, what happens is the nitrogen gains a positive charge and oxygen gains a negative charge. So this is the structure of nitromethane. Now, whenever you see single bonds in a structure, it means that only sigma bonds are present. However, if you have double bonds or triple, triple bonds, then it usually has one sigma bond and then one pi bond. So if you have double bonds, that's one sigma plus one pi. For triple bonds, it will be 1 sigma plus 2 pi. So basically, we have 5 single bonds, so that means you have 5 sigma, and in a double bond, there'll be 1 sigma and 1 pi, so that means the total number of bonds are 6 sigma bonds and 1 pi bond. So that means 
option A, 6 sigma and 1 pi is the correct answer. Now for 5 sigma and 2 pi, that means that there would be two double bonds, which is not correct. And option C also says 2 pi, that means we would have had to had to have a, a triple bond or two double bonds, which is not present. And in option D, the number of sigma bonds don't add up because one of the bonds is not being calculated properly. So option D is incorrect. The correct answer for this question is option A, six sigma and one pi, and that's due to this particular structure of nitromethane, which is CH3 and plus O2 minus. Let's look at the final question of this episode. In which one of the following, manganese exhibits its highest oxidation state? Now remember, manganese is a transition element. So it's present in the D block of the periodic table. So that means it has a range of oxidation states. Let's look at each of the options given. Now in MnO2, manganese dioxide, Let's consider X as the val as the oxidation state of manganese. And the oxidation state of oxygen always happens to be minus 2, except for OF and OF2. So X plus 2 times minus 2 gives you 0, because there is no charge. So 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, so X minus 4 equals 0. That means the oxidation state of manganese in MnO2 is 4. Sounds good. How about MnO4 2 minus? Now, for this ion, we have manganese having an oxidation state of x, and we have four oxygen atoms with an oxidation state of minus 2, and you have a total negative charge of minus 2. So basically, it's x minus 8 equals minus 2. So therefore, x equals minus 2 minus, I mean, minus 2 plus 8. So therefore, x equals 6. So the oxidation state of manganese in MnO4 2 minus is 6. Now, how about MnO, manganese oxide? So it'll be x plus minus 2. So that's x minus 2 equals 0 which means that x equals 2. So the oxidation state of manganese in MnO is plus 2. Now if we look at MnO4 minus, you will see that x plus 4 times minus 2 will be equal to minus 1, because that's the negative charge. So basically you have x minus 8 equals minus 1, so that means x equals minus 1 plus 8. That means the oxidation state of manganese in MnO4 minus is 7. So we have 4, 6, 7, and 2 as the oxidation state of manganese in different, you know, ions and molecules. So the highest oxidation state among the following is x equals 7. So that means option C, MnO4 minus, is the molecule, is the ion which contains the highest oxidation state of manganese. So option C is the correct option. Now that concludes this episode of AEEE Prep. We hope you found this episode interesting. We'll be uploading more content regarding AEEE as well as other entrance exams. To learn more about us, please subscribe to our channel, Brain Blitz Audios, and also share your views in the comment section down below. You can always you can always, you know, get updates about the latest content by hitting the notifications button that's again present below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye bye for now.